Hey everybody, Daryl and Holly with Squizzit Exotics here. We're in a different room today. This is the gecko room because the snake room has that super loud cricket back again. <laughs> so we can't film over there. Uh, today's video, we thought we'd go over something kind of interesting. I'm, I'm behind the camera here, so sorry you won't see me. Um, but we have, uh, we have a tools, uh, kind of central tools video. We, we thought about... <clears throat> yeah. So if you if you want to start doing this kind of on a you know breeder level, not just kind of keeping pets, or even if you're keeping pets, some of these I think most of these will be kind of useful for you. Um, everybody knows you need racks and you need an incubator if you're going to breed kind of stuff, but they'll talk about the tools you need, and I think it's a lot less than people realize. So we kind of want to go over our essential tools, uh, and we threw everything here on a cart. So <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, uh, we threw everything here on a cart. So let's take a look and uh, see what we got here. Yep, so some things might seem a little obvious, but we decided, you know what, it is something that we use, these tools we use every day, every week, or nonstop. So first things first, this back row here, you definitely need hand sanitizer, you're working with reptiles, salmonella is um, definitely a, you know, a concern no matter what, no matter how clean it is, so you should always sanitize after you're done um, with handling any animal. We sometimes just check our tubs to see if uh, there's any locks and we still hand sanitize. So it's always very essential to have your Germex, your hand sanitizer, whatever um, on hand. Um, and of course we buy in bulk. Next is a bottle of disinfectant. So when you're cleaning containers, uh, uh, housing pieces, tubs, anything, we use um, disinfectant, whether that's uh, chlorhexidine or um, F10SC. Uh, what or veterinary grade anything that you use is fine some people I guess might use bleach I'm not sure but that's not what we use um, and then also a spray bottle um, this just came from I think we just got it like LLL reptiles at a show once um, it's from Exoterra spray bottle that, uh, Josh's uh, frogs oh Josh's frogs okay yeah. my bad um, <clears throat> and uh, you just we, we use this to mist our geckos we use this to spray when we're breeding to make it seem like there's a rainstorm going on like yeah anything and you so. can and you, i'm gonna interject a yeah, sure. so you can see the word brita on there that's because we use a brita filled oh, water yes, that in is there true. um it's facing with so you know we try to if we're going to be using it to spray down animals and stuff we want to use clean waters yep absolutely so um there's that and then of course gloves some people say whatever i'm going to hand sanitize i'm going to wash up afterward it doesn't matter personally when i'm cleaning uh snakes and I know that there's going to be poo and really kind of wet urates. I definitely like to wear gloves the entire time that I'm doing it. So and a quick note on those gloves. Uh, we normally use nitrile powder free gloves, but unfortunately, oh, <coughs> yeah, and, uh, there is a glove shortage right now. So <laughs> vinyl gloves it is. It's all we can find. Yep, that is true. And they mm. these do uh, the, the good thing about the other ones that Daryl's talking about mm. is I feel like those are fine the whole time I'm wearing them. These make my hands way sweatier. Um, so it's a little bit more uncomfortable after yeah. you've working working for a while. So just and, a note. And clearly neither of us have extra large hands either. So <laughs> this is just what we could find because right now there's a shortage of gloves. We normally exactly. use nitrile gloves, not vinyl gloves, but you gotta use what you can find. Yep. Uh, the other thing I recommend is if you are going to be doing this often, get yourself some cloths, rags, uh, whatever that you uh, can use, reuse. We, of course, you know, people use paper towels, but when you're at the level of cleaning that we do, I like to reuse. So what we do is we go, we just went to Costco, got bought like a 50 pack of these um, cloths, uh, kind of in a one-time use, uh, wipe down something, do whatever, you know, cleaning urates, things like that. And then I just throw it in the washer, uh, washing machine, um, for a bleach cycle and then I run through it again because I don't like leftover bleach on there. I'm not saying that it definitely stays on there, but just to be safe, I run it through twice on hot water and then I'd go through the anti-back uh, cycle on my dryer. So, so these are very, in my opinion, essential. I go through like three loads a week, yeah. maybe. When, on she, when she says she does it twice through the cycle, the first cycle is a bleach cycle. The second yes. cycle is just water. Yes, just the hot water. Like I just rerun the cycle bleach. again yeah. with no detergent or anything. And no detergent on these. Yeah. Um, just because you don't want the scent, the excess yeah. uh, so residue. So disinfect and clean like with bleach and then run through water get the bleach yep. off. Yep. Um, so yeah. then as we move forward, we've got these other tools here that I guess you can call the uh, 
extensions of your arms. <laughs> so we, I only put the little hook here. This is the hatchling hook, but we have multiple sizes. Um, it's definitely good when it's feeding day and there's trying to, one's trying to escape and we definitely need to kind of wrangle them back in without getting bit because of the smell in the room. Or if you have an extra defensive snake that you need to deal with. That's true. So um, we do have lots of different sizes of hooks. It's just the one that fit on the Or cover. in general. Yeah. Honestly, sometimes just the hooks are good and yes we have uh like three or four different sizes but again this is what fit on the cart this thing has been a lifesaver this is a well you get this get, get hooked i believe yeah this is a we just use a tub opener oh, 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 oh sorry so <laughs> lift it up outside you, where I was yep looking. my bad actually do you want to pan over here real quick just to see this yep. and pretend this is a snake tub yeah we don't use it for the gecko yeah tubs. don't use it for geckos we don't worry about that but that yes imagine a snake tub like it's just so easy again feed day um, lower tubs when you don't want to stick your face down in there. This is lifesaver. Love yeah. this. So, uh, yeah, so feed day. I'll, I'll my interject in the <laughs> okay. Feed day, definitely. Uh, Gershon, if you're watching this video, this is the thing I told you you need to get. Get one, man. Save your life. <laughs> Stop using a hook. It may work so much better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. Um, and then we have our tongs for feed day. Um, we definitely also have different sizes of this. We have bigger ones. We have um, a hooked one. This one I wanted to show because it's got the soft grip on the end. When we're feeding live, <clears throat> you can actually, I know that the animal, you know, you're feeding live, the animal is going to die as a source of food, but this way you're not picking them up and squeezing the crap out of their tail versus um, this is actually it's like surgical yeah hook. I'll it say, it's, got the, it's got the lock here mm -hmm. I'll open it up oh, geez, 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 trying to... look at how it go yep so it's so, got here right there the lock. you see the locking mechanism wait hold on keep it still forward to focus a second there we go locking mechanism right there yep yep and then at the end if you look there's the the that was what would probably really hurt the um there yep the rat so we use this for the um for the frozen thawed mm -hmm. and because we're also feeding smalls or mediums in frozen thawed you know much more sturdy when you have those a little bit heavier mm -hmm. rats on the end of the tail i might interject on that one so yeah, sure. the difference here that really is this one's really nice like she said for the live but the problem is your hand if you're feeding you know 100 plus snakes your hand gets really tired actually sitting mm -hmm. and holding this all the time with this locking mechanism it really helps with the hand fatigue mm -hmm. when you're feeding a that lot is of very animals. true yep. so that's it for those extension pieces um real quick i didn't you know i didn't realize because black on black it made me not realize uh so we have two different um flashlights as well this is for checking your eggs so when we have gecko eggs they're much smaller obviously we just use this tiny little flashlight we got on amazon for like nope, nope. no that's not i that's thought a, i got you a that's a through night oh i apologize that's where's the not. one that i got you from amazon that was like tiny uh, is that like your is, is, is that your everyday right carry there, one right there hold hold that right there okay. Ta -da. <laughs> let's see if it'll focus it's a through night uh and i think if you turn around uh right there it's a ti3 okay okay well my my apologies i got you a small flashlight i guess you use as everyday carry uh, yeah. a long time ago so my bad this is not that but this way i do use that one for everyday carry you may have gotten it on amazon but it is a very specific flashlight okay it's and the reason is, is if you want to see through eggs and you want to see embryos you want a bright flashlight oh it's you very bright yes you don't want a crappy flashlight so that's a 308 ti3 flashlight okay. which works really good for the gecko eggs. yeah this one's really good for gecko and then of course we have a larger one um which was this a super fire nope surefire that's a surefire that uh, morphs on the brain Jeez, surefire i don't remember which one it is from them uh fury, fury. it's an okay. old fury but anyway it's good for uh, it's a snake super eggs super bright and, flashlight oh, too. oh it's not yeah yes yeah you can very see how bright. bright that flashlight is so it works really well for those snake eggs but yeah so those are essential you need to candle um same token actually let's move yep. up here real quick okay. the same token jeweler's loop um, open that up and show what it looks like yep. underneath so you have your magnifier i don't want to blind anybody but you got your light yes and i would say that's that's an essential thing if you're getting a jeweler's loop open up a second again, oh, yeah one. sure and flip it over get one that has a light see how that's got the light built in there that is so helpful so you can get jeweler's loops without it but get yourself one with a light you will not regret it absolutely it's definitely you know i mean that's how we sex our geckos yeah. so so when you're looking for pores on crested geckos you have to have something 
Yep. And that's what we use. In the same token, let's kind of slash over. Oh, we, well, slide over. We got, we got a spot over here we haven't hit. Okay. Right there. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so it might look silly to say Q-tips and tweezers. However, when you're working with baby geckos that are no bigger than you know the size of your pinky, um, and there is um, stuck shed, you definitely need uh, Q-tips that if you wet them and kind of rub along the shed. Uh, It'll loosen it up enough, and then you can take your tweezers and pull the shed off. Um, that happens randomly, more often than not. Uh, just little bits and pieces that get on them, and you realize they're not going to get that off. They're, they're done shedding. There's this tiny little piece left on their tail, on their leg, on the back of their head, whatever. These are essential. Actually, another tip that I will say with these Q-tips is I cut the end off because um, it's way too big and use the stick part for certain things. So we use condiment bottles to feed our uh, pa uh, the Pangea or Rapashi powder uh, food mix. So we use like an old ketchup or condiment bottle that you can just get at the store. And sometimes you can sit and shake that for a long time, but it will, um, there'll be a clump. There'll be a clump in there and it'll get stuck in the nozzle. So I will take this and cut it off and I can just shove it in there, shake again, and it's good to go. So these are kind of in a way multi-purpose. Um, just that's a tip there for that. I'm sure you could have figured that out on your own, but it took me a while to figure out how to unclog the thing. Um, so moving on, we have scales. Um, again, two different sizes. This one's um, not huge, especially considering we have, you know, a couple pound uh, ball pythons, but it still works. Works in grams. Uh, this one's for our crested geckos. Scales are very important. You want to always make sure that your animals aren't losing weight. Um, and that they're gaining properly and especially when you're just updating notes or morph market or anything that you need um, Another big thing a temperature gun. This is uh, E-Tech City I think it's probably one of the first things we ever got we we're on like number two or three just because this is hard use checking the room the tub temperatures anything to make sure that everything is still running smooth um, and then, um, let's see what else am I missing? Oh, this, yes, you might think, what the heck is this spoon? Guys, this is an important this, tool. Let me tell you, this I'm thing a, right a, here, this is this my one. favorite thing, and I probably need to hand sanitize after this. I don't remember who I saw. Maybe it was Billy on Mutation Creation. I don't remember who I saw. I don't think it was Billy, but I, I don't I remember. I cannot it remember. It's been a long time. If you have tubs, and you get that stuck urate on there and you just go it's not coming off whatever and you leave it because you already disinfected it or whatever a spoon there are a little that stuck on urate you just scrape it re-disinfect and it's completely clean yeah I just, and that's so, just you know the spoon we eat with every day <laughs> no no this i don't even remember where we got this i got like a set it's like a okay. knife fork spoon whatever and of course, the fork and knife stayed upstairs. And uh, I, I don't even think it's that. I think it's a random one. But anyway, whatever. If, if Either way, need, it's... Here, here's my ideas: <laughs> go to go to a Goodwill, go to a rescue mission, go to a yard sale, find some place that has a spoon for like a quarter, and get yourself a couple of them and use them for your snake room. You will not regret that purchase. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. All right. And then one final thing: I actually didn't realize I still did dry erase markers regular everyday pens and permanent markers. We go through these so much. We are writing on tubs, we are taking notes, we are updating things. We, we constantly write stuff down. I don't know if you've noticed, especially when I showed you the gecko tub, we take notes on our tubs for each animal. Um, we write on our incubator, I write on our freezer, we keep the rats, how much of each rat we have, like just seems silly and seems kind of pointless to tell you to use pens, but yeah, I mean, clearly Thanks. we take a couple notes on the tubs, wouldn't you think? Mm, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, guys, I don't know if this seemed obvious to you all uh, or really not very interesting. However, I will say this stuff, uh, I get excited about this kind of stuff. This was really, you, I felt useful. I would have liked to have known ahead of time um, about all kinds of stuff. Um, and so especially that spoon, that spoon, I'm telling you. Yeah, and, and Or the hook, things like that. And my part of this video will be, you know, if you're thinking about starting this out as a breeding and you're concerned about all the things you need, it's really not that much. If we fit it all in that one little cart, 
yes, it, it's you know it, it is going to cost you a little bit of money. It's not like it's all free. And some of these things, you know, you know, hook is not you know a, a two dollar item. It takes it does cost a little bit of money. Um, but that being said, this stuff isn't that expensive, and really, it is the essentials mm -hmm. of what you need to do. What we do, yes, of course. Take away the housing um, that you need for an animal, like we said, racks and the stuff that you need inside of it, water, uh, food, all of that stuff. Take away those those essentials that's like the top of your block the things that you need to function this would be what i think is the most essential yeah and then we're also we reuse a lot of things and we're we try to stay pretty green and everything maybe that'll be another video that we do um we use random stuff that we don't use anymore like an old home depot bucket is used to dump things that i need to clean in or something like you know those kind of things so be creative with your stuff um utilize what you've already got or can use or like Daryl said Goodwills and Salvation Armies and yard sales you can find essential pieces or things that you think you're gonna be able to use um, yeah. pretty quickly and cheaply yeah and I, I would I would say you know we didn't put it on this cart but you mentioned it a, a silly orange Home Depot bucket <laughs> we yep. use those for a lot of things uh, so grab yourself a couple of those I think they're only like two bucks a piece three bucks a piece at Home Depot they're super mm -hmm. cheap uh, another thing that we use a ton of I think Lowe's has them too if you're a fan of Lowe's, but yeah, I like them. <laughs> yes. And then, I mean, I guess there's always the, um, the you know, part two of this video if you want to ever get something a little bit more like this is just useful as heck. Things like this cart, stuff like that. So, but we can do that another time. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. I hope that you guys enjoyed this and uh, whether you did or didn't, leave a comment below and let us know. And uh, let me know how I did because I'm very awkward on camera, clearly. And, uh, do all the normal stuff like comment subscribe um check out our morph market we've still got some animals up there um before 2021 season happens yeah. it's on its way yep shout out to all the people we shipped out to this past week yes it was a lot and thank you for your support and even if you haven't bought from us yet thank you for watching absolutely uh and daryl's typical closing like comment subscribe <laughs> all the youtube stuff and we will see you all next week take care bye everybody <laughs>